Hello, folks. We've got another faff match today. This is quite a long one, but I'm told it is full of excitement. Thanks to Darth Sand for posting this in the Replays to Cast channel on the Faf Discord. If you have a replay that you think is very exciting, come to the Faf Discord and post it in the Replays to Cast channel. And that is how casters find exciting games to watch. Today we've got a North versus South divide going on on a Naroxis generated map. This is a, a 3v3 uh, matchmaker ladder game. On the North side, we have three exciting players. From left to right, we have Darth Ruz, Razor, and Vlad065. Razor is in the Seraphim, and the other two are playing as Cybrans. Cybran, pretty hot race at the moment. And if we just look at their starting factories, they've all gone... Oh, no, they haven't. Two of them have gone first land, but Vlad has gone first air. So that's pretty exciting. Meanwhile, across the map on the bottom, again from left to right, we have Cyril 2, Darth Sand, and Red Circle. And they're playing three different races. Uh, Cybron for Cyril 2, UEF for Darth Sand, and Seraphim for Red Circle. So no Aeon love in this game today. Um, but the Aeon Hover units are perhaps not going to be super useful on this map, which is mostly land, and it's, it's very open. Quite a bit of reclaim scattered about if we put on the reclaim overlay, uh, especially around the coastlines. Uh, there's a few bigger pieces in the middle. That's going to be very valuable and assist the early expansion and hopefully a quick start to this game. There is a little bit of water over here. Uh, there's a bit of a raiding route possible there. There's a little plateau there, but I don't think you can get off this land up to the highland, so it's not really an attack route. Mm, we might see a little bit of navy, maybe some investment to, to just come down here and, and guard this kind of area with cruisers, maybe. But I think it will be mostly fought on the land and in the air today. Also, the map generator is being quite generous with the mass points today. Perhaps it's a little hard to see on the video with the bright green on the bright white snowy terrain. But we have quite a concentration of mass points in this area. Uh, a few in between these two players here and then a small number. And then there's, there's an extra starting point here with four, four mass and a hydrocarbon point. And obviously this is mirrored on the bottom side. So the, the bottom left of the map and the top right are mirrors of each other. We see that it's Cyril Toe who is uh, the first to get aircraft out with an air scout coming across to see what the other team is up to. And they're going to meet Darth Russ's base first. And find Darth Russ has actually already put a couple of the Sky Slammers, the T1 mobile air defense units. And so that scout is not going to see the other two bases. They're not going to find that a player has gone first air on this side. It is only churning out engineers with this air factory, though. I, Vlad gets a radar up. And they're bringing their comm out to the front to secure these mass points. Not being very aggressive with their comms, though, the, the top team, the chilies, as we like to refer to them in those colder colours, whereas the toasties in the warmer colours have brought their comms up a little bit more. Red Circle's being a bit more aggressive there and has come out to this expansion and is factoring up. However, I don't want to look at that too much as we have a drop. Four engineers coming out here from Cyril uh, scouting, obviously being very useful to see that this uh, there's a safe landing point here. However, there are orders queued up from Darth Rust to come and secure these mass points. So the engineers have better get a shift on and they've started moving now. They're going to be going on their first factory. No, they've given up on the first one. Perhaps a slight misclick there. But getting to press shift when queuing up the other factories. 
but the first one's already disappeared, but the second one's being built up. And uh, Scout Out now for Razor has spotted this drop. And we see Darth Razor's dispatched a small army of tanks and light artillery to counter this. And we see the, the calm forward attitude going on even more from the Toasties here as both Cyril Toe and Darth Sand have brought theirs up almost to the middle here. The tanks coming in to take out Cyril Toe's expansion there. Engineers reclaiming what they've already built to try and uh, deny that reclaim and get a bit of, a bit of eco back get a bit of their investment back but all of this is going to go down now it was a good try though i'd like to see the ex the expansion and the aggression forward factory going up here for darth sand And they've got quite a lot of units coming forward. They're not stopping to protect their comm. They're pushing straight through. And they're, they're really going to line up dead on the center line there. The, uh, the very center doesn't really have a lot to fight over. And you have to imagine that it's going to be more stable if the, the front line is up here or down here for now. At least until they get those longer range units like the uh, T2 mobile missile launchers or even TAC missile launchers. that will create a, a much wider no man's land in the center. However, now that the Razor's got their air economy going, we see they've got quite a lot of scouts just patrolling back and forth along this uh, center ground so that they can get early warning of any troop movements. And what they're getting early warning of is this quite sizable force from Darth Sand with a bit of anti-air. Not enough to keep the scouts away. Well, that one was enough to keep a scout away. We just saw one get shot down there. But they will dissuade any bombers from coming in. Not that there are any bombers. Because there's, there's a, a handful actually over here for Darth Rus. It is a little confusing having a Darth player on either side of this game. But we'll just make the best we can. Slightly bad engage for Darth Sand here. These units at the front are a bit out on their own and they're taking the brunt of the incoming fire there. However, it now looks like they're going to get a good end on attack almost with these, but they are going to meet Razor's calm here. And they are running away from the ACU. They don't really have enough to take on the ACU and all of these units. So they're going to beat a hasty retreat, but not before leaving a few of their comrades behind. Which I'm sure Razor will be happy to reclaim the mass from a bit later on. Bit of an air engage going on here. And it's not looking good for Cyril Toe, who has been flying over the enemy air defense in order to try and shut down these bombers, but ended up losing all of their fighters that they sent in. And Dothra's now pushing down. Not a great formation here. They, they've got their air defense and their entries at the front where they're going to get wiped out. But are they going to get to the comm of Cyril Toe early enough to force a cancel out of this reclaim? It's not going very fast. Perhaps they can't, uh, Cyril Toe can't really afford this. But they're stuck on the spot until they cancel out. And that could be a big problem for them. They've got more units coming up to defend here. Not really taking damage on the comm yet. But they have lost their hydrocarbon plants. And their, their reinforcements are falling back. 
but the Calm is staying on the spot. Really doesn't want to cancel out at this upgrade. That would be a big loss, but as they're down to half health, I'm not really sure that they get an option, and they cancel out. They're walking back, but can they make it away? They're surrounded by the T1 units of Darth Rus. And they're down to less than a quarter health now. Into the red. They've managed to meet up with their reinforcements, but there are bombers coming in, dropping on them, and no. They were too greedy there with that upgrade, didn't cancel out of it early enough, and they've died as a result. So, Darth Sands, uh, sorry, Cyril Toe there, the first elimination. Despite being the highest rated player on their team, was uh, made, made a greedy call there not to cancel out of the upgrade and paid the price of that. We've also got uh, Dothan bringing in uh, Force to try and answer this. However, there's nothing at the front to stop this push, and the remaining artillery units are going to get some free shots off. And I think they're committed at this point. They're not going to make it to back home, so they're just going to keep pushing forward and see what they can take out, like uh, Mass Extractor here. Maybe these factories, these ones are now being enveloped by the forces of Darth Sand, so I don't think we're going to see any more out of those. But there's a handful here. Can maybe pick up another mechs. However, we also just missed the, uh, an incursion from some blue forces from Vlad. Uh, and they're being chased by Red Circle. So we have the sounds of some pew-pews going on, but mostly the battling has calmed down for a while. And now we look at Darth Sands Calm, which does look a bit vulnerable here. It's reasonably close to Darth Rus, and so maybe the Darths are going to have a bit of a duel. And it's like Highlander, there can be only one Darth. Darth Sand pushing in here. They, they've brought their units up to meet their Calm so they can have a unified push, but the units are, are kind of trickling in. However, the mass here is, uh, mass in terms of numbers, not in terms of the resource, is enough to cause Darthrus to fall back a little bit and line up a bit better. So this is gonna be a much harder, a much harder wall to attack. And there's the fighter bombers coming in, the Nothers from Red Circle here, taking out a bomber. What's this? One on its own, you can't imagine it's going to do that much. And it's turning around to, to head home. But it's already being chased down by interceptors. But the engage is happening now. And actually, Darth Sands, after seeing the hubris of their neighbor punished, does not want to get too far to the front line, but they're still being overflown by bombers. And as the mobile air defense is being taken down in the land engagement, they really don't have much to answer these bombers with. And they're in quite a dangerous position. They've been separated from their reinforcements. However, the um, T2 interceptors, sorry, the T1 interceptors here are uh, coming in to try and defend. But that's a lot of air on the other side. And Dolchan's down to 4,000 hit points. And they're dancing for their life. They, they don't really have anything to fall back to. And they've lost their interceptors here against superior numbers from Razor. And so now how are they going to answer these bombers? And fighter bombers. Down to less than 1,500. They're in the red. They can't take many more passes. Down to 800 now. 600. They're rushing up a flak, but it's not coming very fast. Will it be up in time? Less than 500 hit points there after that pass. However, it does look like the bombers have mostly been dispatched or the remaining ones pulled back. And so they're gonna get away with it for now. 
the flag is there and also a shield coming up that will protect them while they regenerate their health. And indeed it did. It came up just in time to stop what could have been the last pass there from three Corsairs. I think that would have been enough to finish off the column at this stage, but the shields protecting the ACU and that flak is making sure that none of these bombers are getting a second pass. And so I think they're out of danger for now. And that's also given enough time for them to bring up some more land units to protect the line where they, they lost their battle. And quite an army of engineers here to get the reclaim from that. And it does look like they're being a lot faster to get the reclaim than their counterpart, Darth Rus, who uh, has a couple of engineers, but they are building some T1 point defense. Um, however, now that the, the air war has failed, there's T2 land coming in from Razor to try and finish off the job on Darth Sand, who's now back up to 2,000 health, but they are still inside their shield. There's only a T1, well, a couple of T1 point defenses here to defend, but Titans coming in, and this is a really quick switch up to T3 here. We, we didn't really see any T2 coming out from Darth Sand, but the Titans coming in, and they are enough to clean up those T2 units from Razor and Darth Sand actually has more hit points left after the that attack than they did at the start of it. So really quite an unsuccessful attack here. And Vlad is also coming in with some T2 tanks, but you're gonna have to see, they, they might wanna give this area a wide berth at this stage. However, Darth Sand's reinforcements that were coming up here were only T1 and they were not enough to repel an advance from Darth Rus here. Uh, however, Darth Rus's units unknowingly walking into T1 point defense here and there's still quite a few mantises so they're really going to struggle to get anything done in this area this one that's gone the other way around the cliff you might think that was a mistake but actually that's looking really good and it looks like it's going to bypass the defenses here and it might be able to take out this uh, T2 mechs and some, uh, some land factories here however we're not going to be able to stick around and see as there's another advance coming on here. They really want to finish off the job on Darth Sand's car, who's really melting health now in the face of T2 land units. The first shield generator's gone down. The second one's lost its shield. Not really able to contribute to this engagement. There's T1 point defense, but it's not enough against the T2 units. And Darth Sand has had to call in some extra T3 from their right side and they can take out the enemy units but they can't absorb the damage for the comp and Darth Sand, oh a quick level of vet there I think saving Darth Sand but they're still down below 2000 down below 1500 1200 but one pass gets off from this bomber from Darth Rose but uh, at about 500 hit points there at the end. Darth Sand again lives to fight another day. And do they do they really deserve so many second chances? They've been standing around in the center here with low hit points, really asking to be picked off there. And they've got away with it twice. And that's been amazing. But it's also been very costly. They've not been able to hold this area and they've completely been driven off this position here more than once. And we can see the effect on the scores, on the, the economy. If we look over at the mass income, 427 for the chilies versus 400 from the toasties. So that's nearly a 30, 30 mass difference. And Darth Sand, uh, if that's flicked on to replay now, Darth Sand on just over 200 though. So they're not letting their team down. They're, but considering they've got two bases, they've only got as much mass income as Red Circle who has one base. However, on the other side, Razor and Vlad do seem to have been a bit slower with their upgrades, perhaps. Vlad very much behind on only just under 100 mass there. Really needs to get some T2 upgrades on their mass extractors. As uh, if you look at in territory, the, the chilies are actually looking a bit up as they've managed to drive the toasties off a few of these forward positions. And therefore, there are a few unclaimed mass points 
on the toasty side. However, Darth Sands T3 units again, roving around, taking out any of the T2 units from Vlad and from Razor that are making an assault on this central area. And if you're Razor or Vlad at this point, you've got to be thinking that it's time for an upgrade to T3. You can't keep throwing equal numbers of T2 units against T3 units. It's not going to do much. Uh, however, Darth Ruz has decided to just skip T2, T3 armies and go straight to having a Monkey Lord. And that's certainly enough to take on this position. But there are quite a lot of Titans here. And so... It's still quite risky. They will need to get a good engage. And it's possible that with good micro, Dodsang can counter this monkey. But they do need to see it coming. It's slightly unfortunate that uh, Vlad, uh, sorry, that Darth Russ has chosen to attack the, with the monkey here and with their T1 units here. And the T1 units are just getting wiped out by the T3 army, uh, sorry, T2 army from Darth Sands. However, the Titans over here have chosen not to engage the monkey, and the monkey gets to clean up this area for free. And now it's a question of who can bring in their engineers the faster, because this is quite a lot of reclaim in this area. If we zoom out a bit, it's easily 20k reclaim on this position. And that could be a really big game changer in terms of teching up and leveling up to the experimental tier of warfare. However, we see that Dotan has been investing in air and they've got those whalers, the T3 UEF gunships, and they're now able to whale on this Monkey Lord completely unopposed. And it's down to about half health now. It's got quite a lot of regen, but it's not going to get a chance to use it. I really don't see this achieving much more now unless the Chilis can pull something out of the bag here. Also, Strat Bomber coming in and another one of those will kill it. So the Monkey just about makes it to the front here but doesn't really get to do anything. There is a bit of T3 behind it from Razor. Sorry, is that T2? Oh no, it's only Ilshavos. Ilshavos are pretty good for T2 units but they're still not enough to fight off these gunships. Uh, there was a, an Ilshavo here. Sorry, uh, an Ilshavo. The anti-air from the Seraphim. I, I don't know why I keep using the stupid names that the developers thought of for these units. They are uh, just confusing. I should just call them all flak. But yeah, the T2 air defense from Seraphim has done a good job at clearing out or keeping away those whalers. But... Ultimately, these units now forced to fall back and still taking heavy losses to bombers. However, we were talking about the No Man's Land earlier and this has been pretty favorable for the Chilis as the Toasties have, apart from this little mass of units that's not really doing anything, They've been forced completely off this whole central area. And that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Maybe not this one, so, but at least seven mass points that are not safe for the Toasties to claim at this point. And Razor has always already moved in on this central position and they're defending it up and they're starting to get a bit of the reclaim. I think maybe they could be getting the reclaim a bit sooner, but you can't fault them for wanting to get a bit more safety in this area. I would much rather see like 10 T1 engineers. In fact, just I'd put up a T1 land factory, have it churning out engineers. They're going to pay for themselves really quickly, even if you're ultimately forced off this position. So perhaps a bit of a pause in hostilities now as the Chilis have uh, outreached their supply lines, as it were, and they're stopping to cement their positions here to get that reclaim and probably to put that economy straight into experimentals 
or possibly even nukes or artillery. And as we said earlier, there is just a bit of uh, a bit of water here, and we've seen that Red Circle, who uh, the, being the newest player in the game, I believe this is their fourteenth game of FAF. So perhaps just looking for the chance to get some experience with Navy is pretty unopposed in the water here. There's, there's a, a shipyard for Vlad, but it has not produced anything. It's fairly well defended. It's going to be hard to drive them off position, but they've just got a couple of cruisers here and they're just wailing on the home base of Vlad, who's been forced to invest quite a lot into tactical missile defense here to defend against this. You do have to imagine that if they redeployed these against some of these outlying mexes, they could get a lot more work done with this. However, I don't want to look at that for too long as there's another attack coming here. Those units that weren't doing much in the center for Darth Sand, well, now they're doing something. They are totally clearing up this position. There was a lot of air defense over here from Razor, but not much to defend from armies. And so they've now been driven off and they have not managed to secure this reclaim. Still over 10,000 reclaim in this area alone and easily another 5,000 in this area that's completely unclaimed. Great strat there. Manages to pick off uh, five units uh, in one bomb. And it's pretty uncontested. There's quite a reasonable ASF force for Darthras and a, a, a few for Razor as well to support. But are they going to take the air fight? Red Circle wants to take the air fight with these ones from Razor, but perhaps didn't know that the ones from Darthras were coming in. Perhaps uh, a less unbalanced fight than they were hoping for. And I think this is looking good, looking less good for Red Circle now. And, and they also think so. And they're running away from that fight. But uh, the... The strat bomber that was harassing these forces has now been downed. Not a, a critical mass of strat bombers yet for the Toasties. There's three more whalers here that could be deployed. Uh, however, if we look at strats, we've got one here and one over on the right side here. Uh, not enough to really consider doing a snipe yet. And I just want to take a quick look at this ACU here. Darth Sand's now fully back up to health. And they've also upgraded their comm to Tech 3 and got the shield. And the fact that they've got Raz on it now as well as the resource allocation system, which if you're new to the game, that increases the resource generation. Your ACU does have some, uh, some basic resource generation that they can do even without mass points or power generators and the RAS increases how much you get so i think it's clear that they're intending to keep this comm further back in their base now they've not gone for any of the aggressive upgrades on it but they are going for strategic missile defense it is that point in the game we're nearly half an hour in and it's definitely uh, the time when you could expect to see some nukes flying so uh, a wise investment there they're not assisting it yet but that will be able to just build up they're also going for a fat boy which i think given the 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 broad line of contact here. A fat boy could be the right unit for this situation with its really long range fire. Good at keeping the enemy at bay, not so good at close in fighting. And I think that's might be what's needed to break the stalemate here. Uh, we also see a couple more cruisers up for red circle. And so now they've, they're attacking two positions and they forced a bit more investment in TMDs here from Vlad. If we look at the Ecos, Vlad is the least able to afford it as well. They're still only in 174. Obviously, the, the, that early uh, getting behind on their upgrades has cost them, and they're still still got a lot of T1 mass extractors, though I probably wouldn't be upgrading these ones while they're in range of these cruisers. Um, they're at T2 at the back. They've got some T3 for their Cormexes. Oh, they're also going for a Megalith and the T3 upgrade on their ECU. Overall, the economies are looking a bit more balanced, maybe 50 uh, difference there in favor of the Toasties. Though you do have to think again, Darth Sands not quite as far ahead as you would like, given that they've got two bases, but also they have lost those forward ones, still not able to reclaim those in safety. When I say reclaim, I mean to, to rebuild those in safety. 
and also not able to access the reclaim here. Though they've had these units here for a long time, they could easily have got some T1 engineers. And I really think that's going to be a deciding factor for this game, that you've just not seen the armies of T1 engineers come up to claim the reclaim like you would see in higher level play. And it's very difficult to do because, of course, you've got to manage the econ in your base and make sure that you're fighting and building things like nuke defenses so that you can be there, be safe for the longer game. But the, that's using up your APM and then microing some engineers to come up and get reclaim in a more dangerous area is probably the first thing that you're going to drop, the first plate that you're going to let drop while you're using all your APM on all those different complications. And we get here just in time to see that a Monkey Lord has reached the front line for Darth Ruz. And a chicken for Razor, and they've chosen this time to push in. And this is quite a sizable force. However, the fat boy for Darth Sands is also up. And it started kiting back away from these forces, but is it perhaps too early? I was going to say maybe it's a problem. The Monkey Lord is not at the vanguard of their, their army there. It's quite far back and it's being overtaken by more of those T2 and 3 units. However, the fact that the, um, the, the T3 units are going to get close to the Fat Boy while the Fat Boy is not yet engaging the Monkey Lord with its, uh, with its long range weapons could well be something in favor of the Chilis. However, Monkey Lord now taking Fat Boy and Megalith fire. Obviously, that wasn't going to last too long. And the chicken has not yet been engaged. This megalith is way too front in and way too far forward. It needs to start kiting back. Perhaps overconfident after they've downed one of the megaliths. Chicken now taking fat boy fire and megalith fire. It's a little tankier than the spiders, but again, down to half health already. It's made it into uh, melee range almost with the Megalith, but not able to do too much damage, maybe uh, knocking a quarter off the Megalith there. Also, a lot of T1 bombers coming in. This is, again, the, the, the meta of using T1 bombers as anti-experimental units. But against the bouncers here, the, the T3 mobile anti-air, None of them get a second pass. Oh, no. Well, one of them got a second pass, but they did not even penetrate the shield of the Fat Boy there. Oh, and it looks like the Fat Boy is building, which is good. You don't often see the factory. The Fat Boy is, after all, a mobile factory, and you don't see people using the factory element much. They just use it as a mobile artillery platform. And so of that overall, the whole engagement here has been fought off by the Toasties. And... That was very costly. It's left 30, maybe 40k reclaim in this area that's very accessible for the Toasties without really doing any economic damage. It took out a lot of units and was very costly. It whittled down the army a lot, but has not really... Uh, it did kill a bit of a build power, but has not really taken out the economy. And if we look here, Team 2 is now about 200 mass ahead of Team 1. So really quite a lot of mass spent and sent in as a reclaim donation, a mass donation, without really achieving uh, a long-term goal. However, we also see uh, a Monkey Lord getting stuck on the terrain here. That's quite sad. I've often seen spiders getting stuck on terrain, like bathtubs, for instance but uh, it's always sad to see it in the game. The cruiser army is uh, being whittled down now by a T2 sub killer, the Barracuda from Vlad, who's fed up of having to build all these missile defenses, but there's a destroyer coming up to fight it. And the destroyer is definitely going to win that battle. Oh, yeah, sorry, there's two subs here, but the destroyer is still going to defeat both of them. But it can't, it's got to be careful not to get too close to the fixed torpedo launchers.
and the, oh yeah, those missiles were going for the sub maybe. The, the cruise missiles of the cruiser not hugely effective against very mobile things like submarines. But anyway, emboldened by his defensive success there, and Dartans has moved up their units. I'm slightly worried that the long range units, the Mega and the Fat Boy, are very close to the close in units. That's the T3 land units, which are a, mix, a good mix of Bricks and Percy's with some bounces in to defend against air. Really good combined arms army there. They are definitely going to be able to get some work done. Let's just see how much. These T3 units are not pushing in and really need to. If you're fighting against two artillery units like this, you really can't afford to be walking around in the back line getting attritional damage. But now the Megaliths uh, has been engaged by the two spiders. And the Megaliths can't take that level of damage. And it's down to about quarter health there, less than a quarter, now 10%. And only just survives there. The, the Bricks and Percy's really coming in clutch to finish off the second Monkey Lord before it could quite get enough damage into the Megalith. And with that 50 per second regen now, it's hard to see how Razor is going to put in enough damage into this Mega to bring it down, much less the chonky lad that's already kiting back from this chicken. However, the chicken is close enough to engage it. There's no way the chonky lad is going to win this fight. And the Mega goes down to a third Monkey Lord. And we're going to split screen just too late to see the Fat Boy dispatched by the chicken. And so this push has now lost its momentum, but it has already done quite a bit of damage. It's taken out a bit of eco in some factories in this area. These Bricks and Percy's are not going to engage the Monkey Lord at all. They are going to take on some Sakus, some support commanders. And these are the Rasp preset ones, so they are not capable of doing a, a lot of damage, but they are still pretty strong units in their own right. And only, I think, one of them got taken out here. But that's it for that attack. But at the same time, on the other side of the map, there is an air engage, and Red Circle has been trying to kite Darth Russ's ASF force, which has superior numbers, over to the cruisers, which would have been very costly. These Barracuda submarines really getting churned out in numbers by Vlad here, is completely fed up of being uh, molested by cruisers. And the cruisers have been whittled down to three now, and the previous destroyer has been destroyed. Uh, and this one is engaging the submarines, but perhaps could be a slightly smarter engage there. It's definitely taking on all of them at once. And it's going to win the engagement, but not enough to get veterancy. And so not going to have regen, not going to get its health back for the next engagement. And so if Vlad manages to keep putting out, oh, then they've stopped building their subs. So Destroyer in a very uh, weak position here. Oh, wow. A bit of a trickled in army of anti-air going on here for Red Circle. This is a very interesting thing. I'm surprised these have got through, but they have been coming right up the side whilst all of the defenses have been focused on the left side. And again, going to quickly go into split screen so that we can see the left side and the left, the right side battle here. So these units, not quite strong enough to take on all of the point defense in the main base of Vlad, but definitely able to take these mixes. And Vlad's still very behind in eco with only 200 mass, the, the lowest eco player in the game, which is a bit of a shame considering they're the highest rated on their side, but they've just been consistently behind. It's hard to come back from that. And now they're going to lose uh, one, two, three, four, five mass points maybe. Oh, unless these clutch point defenses can finish the job, but I don't think so. I think they are just going to lose all five of these mass points. 
Meanwhile, there was an, another push. I, I didn't even comment on it, but there was another push from Darth Stan coming up here. And this area is now well defended enough that it's going to be very hard to break. There's a Mega and a Monkey. Good combination, this. Because the Monkey can do the closing stuff and the Mega can do attritional damage with artillery at range. It's going to be very hard to push into this by land now. And especially with quite a few support commanders very near the front line as well. And the reclaim is going on, so that's hugely going to boost the economy for the north side for those chilies, especially Razor. However, Vlad didn't manage to lose all five mass points there, cleared up with a strat bomber, but did fall even further back. And if we take a look at the zoomed out map here, we can just see a whole swathe of empty mass points here. That's a big problem for Vlad. They have managed to get their Megalith out, and they might be able to use this to fight off the Navy, finally, that's been a thorn in their side forever. Really good play from Red Circle for a, 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 such a novice player. And uh, the lowest rated on their team. It's nice to see them really winning their lane. They, they've completely neutered Vlad. Vlad's just not been able to contribute offensively to the Chile war plan. And Road Circle has just been sitting here and chilling and sending units off to the center, but also keeping this lane unsafe for the Toasties. We do see a small push here from Darth Russ. Bit of a probing attack, you think, because these the, the main force is a little bit behind, obviously far enough that they could have turned back if they'd met overwhelming force. But it turns out that they're the overwhelming force, so they're going to keep moving forward, forcing Darth Sands to fall back to this kind of area where they have enough, well, where they have the bulk of their forces and they might actually be able to put together some kind of defense. They really could do with taking off their whalers. There's very little air defense in this assault force. In fact, I don't see and Oh yeah, I do see some SAMs, mobile SAMs at the back, but really not a huge amount. And these are getting distracted now by the huge loads of uh, engineers that have come out to take this reclaim. Quite a lot less reclaim in this area than there was before. And that most of that has gone to Darth Sands. And you can see, actually, the reclaim figures have just popped up. They've got 147,000 reclaim. That's nearly 10 times as much as most of the players, meaning that the overall reclaim flow is 154 to 94. That's in favor of the Toasties. So that's 60, 60K extra reclaim for the Toasties. And that really puts them in a much stronger economic position. And the air engage has started. Uh, Darth Russ sending their ASFs, also Razor sending their ASFs down to try and counter these whalers, but they just didn't have the mass for that. And Darth, uh, Darth San has a lot more mobile anti-air in the unit composition. So fighting over these ground forces very much favored the Toasties here. And so this assault force from the Chilis really doesn't stand a chance now. They can't fight the Whalers. They just can do what damage they can to the ground forces of Darth Sands, which is a bit of a two-edged sword because you, you would rather be destroying enemy units when they're not in range of your economy, i.e. down here rather than up here. But also you'd rather be destroying the enemy units in a place where you can get the reclaim from them. So. They've left a lot more reclaim here in an area that Darth Sand has been capable of mopping up. However, they've been a lot quicker this time in sending T1 engineers down, not far behind their ground forces. So they could potentially get a bit of this, but I think these engineers are just going to get mopped up by the whalers as there's really nothing to protect them now. 
and that choice to send in their ASFs to defend to try and counter the Whalers uh, from uh, both of the Toasty players with there, uh, sorry, both of the Chili players with there from Dothras and from Razor, uh, has really been a very big air loss. And I have just noticed you've been watching it for a while, but T3 Heavy Artillery has come up for Red Circle. They're building a second, and you've seen this shooting across the map, and it's not going for the opposite number. That is really the kind of play that you'd expect to see from a new player, but they've gone straight across to the other corner to Darth Ruz, and they're concentrating with four Novaxes from Darth Sands. And they really just want to snipe the Com here, who is absolutely surrounded by shields, and getting Teleporter. And we also see Laser coming out for Vlad here. They have not yet got Teleporter, but I think Teleporter is going to be next on the queue for them. So we're going to see a double Tele Laser play. Razor doesn't seem to be going for any extra upgrades at this time. It's not clear what their plan is to end the game. They've got a Soul Ripper that's just parked in their base for now, but they don't have the air to back it up. And sending it into this unit, this force of ASFs, would be suicidal. So perhaps they made an investment there before the air engage went down and now just can't use what they've invested in which is not something you want to be doing when you're 300 mass behind and well behind in the reclaim game. The engineers for Darth Sand here already getting out and reclaiming those tasty wrecks. So it's really not looking good for the Chilis at this stage. And Darth Sand has been doing very well with their two bases. They've cemented their control over this area well despite being forced to fall back from the center they've really still managed to deny these central mexes to the chilies darth Russ now ready to teleport in and there he goes but it looks like he's chosen a very bad place he's taking heavy fire from point defense does not kill the calm manages to eliminate a couple of mass extractors but really does not do the damage that he needed to do there and Darth Sand survives and the shields blink out for an instant there as all of these shields get given to Vlad and they don't have the economy to support it and so now this base is just dead to artillery however the artillery the Novax is focusing on unshielded outlying tech 3 mexes The Whalers are just going around taking anything that doesn't have air defense, which is most things. And the T3 artillery now refocusing on Vlad's base. Vlad now also ready to teleport, but chooses the worst possible place right next to a ton of point defenses. Gets Red Circle down to about 50% health there, but still dies basically for no gain there and so we are down to one player on the chili side and really it's now just the toasties game to lose all that remains is the dismantling of razor space really they've got their soul ripper but they don't really have the means to do anything with it and it's getting eaten by asfs the ASFs just openly flying over Razor's base here. Which does have quite a lot of SAMs to try and protect against the snipe. So really quite wasteful of units. But obviously the Toasty is now so confident. They do know where the comm is. It's just a question of finishing the job. The one, two, three, four, five Novaxes here for Darth Sands. Just surgically taking out one mass extractor after another. All of the land forces are being recalled. Monkey Lug coming straight back in. Meanwhile, two Megas coming in from Darth Sands, making the presence felt at range. These outlying units just being left to their fates here 
and it looks like the shields went down to the pressure there and artillery finished the job. So really interesting 3v3 there. Very exciting commander action at the start. And you do have to wonder if Darth Sand had died when they were a bit, uh, when they were being a bit greedy at the front here and there were all of those waves of attacks on them. If they had died, how would that game have been different? Cyril Toe had already been eliminated and Red Circle, the least experienced player of the game, you do have to wonder, they've done a good job with their lane, but would they have been able to do such a good job when they were keeping their whole front busy against three players? You really have to doubt it. So I think that game really did just balance on, on the edge of a cliff there. Props to the Toasty team for really keeping the pressure up, turning their economic advantage into military advantage and actually managing to build game enders and finish the game, which is often a problem. If you enjoyed this game and you think you might like to play it yourself, you can get Supreme Commander Forged Alliance on Steam for a couple of pounds, euros, dollars, whatever. You can get Forged Alliance Forever for free. Forged Alliance Forever is a matchmaking client and it hosts replays and they, the community behind it has been patching and balancing this game uh, since it stopped being supported by the developers, which is quite a few years ago now. It's a great game. There's a lively community to it. And if you already pl play the game, tell your friends to start playing. And that's how we will get shorter queue times and better matches and a better community with more players. And make sure you like every Forge Lines video that you see so that other people will see those videos and be encouraged to play the game. This has been Forge Lines Forever. Thanks to all of our players today. Thanks to Darth Sand for suggesting the cast. A really exciting game. I've been Tufty Indigo. Toodle Pip.